So now in the event that you want to do a relative frequency polygon, you're going to want to do the following. You're still going to need a vertical axis and a horizontal axis, but this time you're using class midpoints for your x-axis. So if what they give you doesn't already have class midpoints, you're going to have to find them. So you're going to add 5.5 to 10.5 and get 16, and divide 16 by 2 and get 8. Then since the class width is 5, you're going to add 5 to 8, and you're going to get 13. Add 5 again, and you're going to get 18. Add 5 again and get 23. Add 5 again, 28, 33, and 38. These are the values that you use for your x-axis. So here is 8, making sure that this distance from the corner to that first tick mark is longer than the distance from this tick mark to the next tick mark. So that's going to be 13, and that's going to be 18, that's 23, 28, 33, and 38. Now, the heights above these midpoints are going to be your relative frequencies for a relative frequency polygon, not your frequencies. So, since the greatest relative frequency is 0.25, we can just go by 0 .0, this is 0 0.05, 0.10, 0 0.15, 0 0.20, and 0.25. If you want to go one tick mark more than your maximum, that's fine, but you don't need to go more than that. You also want to write down what measuring. This is relative frequency. Okay? By doing these four items, you just got your first four points for this graph. The remaining two points are how well you construct the actual frequency polygon. So above the 8, you need to go a height of 5 and put a dot.